Welcome to Electra Online and now for a very exciting next phase in the evolution of a star. The star has been growing to enormous size, becoming a red giant, a hundred times the size that it was previously. And that is in radius or in diameter. Imagine volume wise, if you take a hundred and and take it to the third power that would be a million times the volume of what it was before so the star in volume has grown to a million times the volume that it was when it was a regular star so what happens at that point well eventually as the core continues to receive the heat from the hydrogen burning shell around it it reaches a temperature of a hundred million kelvin at that point there's enough heat there to move them the atoms around sufficiently fast so that to, when two helium nuclei are on a collision course to one another before their repulsive force can push them away from each other they will actually collide and the nuclear strong force will take over and zap them together hold them together just momentarily so helium will begin to fuse into carbon in a two-way process first two helium atoms or two helium nuclei will come together because at that point the electrons are stripped away so they're not really atoms anymore they're simply the nuclei of the atoms they will they will collide together and form a beryllium with four uh, protons in the center and eight total nuclear particles so four protons and four neutrons but that's a very unstable state for beryllium it will only be like that for 1 times 10 to the minus 12 seconds. 1 times 10 to the minus 12 seconds is, wow, that would be hmm, 1 trillionth of a second. That's an incredibly short amount of time. And then it will disintegrate. So two helium nuclei will bounce together, nuclear strong force will hold it together, but it's unstable. Almost immediately will disintegrate again. But in that very short period of time, 1 trillionth of a second, if during that time another helium nucleus will collide with that, they will join together and form a carbon nucleus, which is stable and will stay there as a carbon nucleus. That's called the triple alpha process. Three helium nuclei collided together to form carbon. But again, it has to happen at that very short period of time when beryllium is formed, and, but the density, remember, it's 10,000 times as dense as lead, the density is so great that the probability of another helium nucleus colliding with the beryllium before it disintegrates is high enough so carbon begins to form and that helium burning process, as we call it, or the helium fusion process into carbon begins at the center of that star. Now, Something very strange happens, and that event is called a helium flash. What happens is that the gravity versus thermal pressure at that moment is not balanced. Remember, gravity kept on pushing, 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 and even though the temperatures weren't high enough, gravity would continue to push it even tighter and tighter in a more denser uh, volume. But the electron degeneracy, the repulsive force of the electrons, sufficiently halt the collapse so that gravity can no longer push the nucleus even closer together, even in a more dense state. So at that point, the two are not balanced. The thermal pressure pushing back and the gravitational force pulling in are not balanced at that moment. So when at a sudden moment, the helium, helium begins to be fused in the, in the core, all that newly formed energy is beginning to push back but there's nothing to push back against because gravity was halted by the electron degeneracy. So it's almost like there's nothing to fight back against. Electrons are holding gravity back and all of a sudden all that generated heat from the helium burning process, from the conversion of helium to carbon in the nuclear fusion process, that energy just flashes through the core. And so all of a sudden we have this enormous influx of energy not being halted back by gravity. And we call that the helium flash. So for a matter of hours or days, a very short period of time, this rushes through the core until the balance is reached again, until the radiation pressure overcomes the repulsive force of the electrons, and then it begins to push back against gravity, and then this process begins to stabilize, and slowly that generated heat begins to push the core, the core outward. So that's what we call the helium flash. It's a sudden generation of heat when, he, when the helium fusion process starts, fusing helium into carbon. There's nothing there to hold back the generation of the radiation. The radiation pressure is not sufficiently large yet to push back against gravity because the electron degeneracy is holding things in place and it just rushes through the core, filling the core with all this energy ferociously fast because nothing to hold back that reaction process. The helium fusion process starts at a very ferocious rate until bang it pushes up against gravity and all of a sudden there's this stabilization moment where things become back stable. So at that point the core begins to grow and as the core begins to grow the energy being produced from the helium 
fusion process, instead of reaching the outer edges of the star and keeping the star as large as it was, 100 times the rate is that it currently is, a lot of the energy is not being used to expand the star or the core of the star against gravity. So most of the energy is used to expand the core rather than expanding the star, and the star begins to get smaller again. So the outer layers of the star not receiving this energy from the burning of the fusion of helium into carbon in the core, the star begins to collapse and become smaller. So after the helium flash, the star gets lower in size. When it becomes smaller in size, then the edges of the star begin to increase in temperature. So the color begins to change. It goes from the reddish back into orange into the yellow stage. And it reaches what we call the horizontal branch. Depending upon the mass of the star, some stars will be further to the left, some stars will be further to the right. But they'll end up in this region right here, not as big as it was before, but much bigger, of course, than it was in the subgiant stage. It's still a very large giant star, not quite as large as it was right before the helium flash. At that point, it reaches the stabilization point where again, there's a balance between the, the radiation pushing outward from the fusion of helium into carbon and the gravity pulling things inward. So at that point, the star stays at this stage and continues to burn helium into carbon. And that would then be the stable stage of the star for the time being until this process comes to an end. So that is why we have this helium flash, the sudden onrush of energy in the core. The core will initially not expand until the balance is reached again between gravity and the radiation pressure. The radiation pressure pushes the core outward, lowers the temperature of the core, and lowers the temperature, not the temperature of the core, but lowers the energy that's released to the outside of the star, causing the star to decrease in size until it's stabilized again, until it reaches that steady state period where it now is a giant red star where the fusion process now is helium being converted into carbon in the core.